Thank you for joining me live here in the KEXP studios. I'm Cheryl Waters, and I'm so excited to be here with another fantastic live band. We're here at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. And you can also listen to KEXP on our free mobile apps. Thank you for supporting great music here on listener-powered KEXP. I'm down here in the studio with Sessa. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I am so excited to have you here, and you're going to be playing songs from Estrella Acesa, your newest album. That's and right. I cannot <laughs> wait. It's Cessa live on KEXP. <laughs>
Seu dançar tão solto e me acabar Nessa faca afiada Mas ideia danada Vambora pra longe que aqui nada presta Seu dançar tão besta e me sangrar Procurando uma brecha You don't make any sense Sentido do beijo é pra fora e pra frente Que hora 
Final sounds. What's that called? 
It's a shaker with nails. <laughs> I don't know if there is a proper name. I love it with the final strains of music from Estrella Acesa, the new album from Acesa. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Your performances are absolutely breathtaking. Every time I see you live, I do feel like I'm holding my breath. And the songs from Estrella Acesa are just so beautifully accompanied by these beautiful vocals with you here and also this minimalist percussion. What's so important about keeping your live sound so minimal? How does it enhance the performance? I think it's um, maybe a bit like a, a play with very few actors, you know, whenever there's an entrance, there's a lot of space to, to be filled. Um, and I also like some something that like makes you take a step closer because it seems like you know it's not that the sound it's blasting and getting to you in a very assertive way you know you have to kind of like maybe get invited in a bit you know well, you've talked about rock and roll and soul being your first mm -hmm. musical love, and I know you played in rock and punk bands, although I laugh mm -hmm. to hear you say in interviews that mm -hmm. they always tell you that you played too soft. But can you tell us how you made your way to Tropicalia, which is the music of your youth? Um, well, I, I always played nylon guitar and, and the repertoire of you know, MPB, the Brazilian popular music. Um, so, because that's just kind of like the easiest thing to get into music when you want to play guitar, you know, and I really wanted to play like, you know, electric guitar like Jimi Hendrix, but the first one you get is like a, a, a nylon. So that was my beginning. And then I, f I fell in love with, with you know, uh, garage rock and soul music and, and I lived that energy which has to do with being younger, I guess. Um, and then I, I was, I, I don't know, I, I lived in New York, I was touring a lot, I guess it, it was a way to come back to, to that repertoire, to, to going back at writing songs, it was a way to ground myself maybe when I was very, you know, nomad maybe, as, working as a musician, you know. I'm so enchanted to hear the part of your story that when you were young in your teens and early 20s, you spent so much time in a record store in right. New York, Tropicalia yeah. in Furs. And yes. of course, you were familiar with that music from your time in Brazil, but it sounds like that's an incredible store with a rich collection of music. I mean, how much of your musical knowledge was gained there in the U.S.? A good part. I, I I always was like into the research and going to record stores, but but I you know since I worked there and I spent so much time there and even though the store it closed so you know it was great and um, it was busy. There were some you know Tuesday afternoons that no one was there. So I I would really like explore and I ended up. You know, there's also this whole rare record world where a lot of the rare Brazilian records are not in Brazil anymore, right? They're here or in Japan and in Europe. So um, so I, I got in touch with, for the first time, with a lot of kind of like more obscure stuff here. Do you think you would have made your way to making music like this if you hadn't spent all those years in the record store? F for sure, no. I mean that I, you know it's a hard thing to think about because that's just how my my life went but uh, I I definitely real you know I go back to that period uh, you know when I'm working on records because of just being like exposed to the way the records work how are they sequenced you know how do you think of artwork and how do you open a B-side? How do you end the record? That was something that kind of like it got, you know, engraved in in my, you know, I don't know if in my head or in my heart, you know. But um, so, you know, I go back to, to this period. Of, it was kind of like for formative in many ways. Yeah. 
It's great to think about you listening to those old records to help you put together your music and help you reference how you're mm -hmm. going to write music now. Your Brazilian culture plays an obvious role in the way that you write music, and you've mentioned in the past that songwriting is not only a form of expression musically in Brazil, but also a big part of cultural life. Can you tell me how bringing these two elements together in your music works, or is it just something you don't even think about? Mm. Well, the songwriting is, you know, I think my work with the records and the production is a bit creating these, you know, little universes where, where everything kind of makes sense musically and and it's very connected to, to the songwriting. But the, the song is like the first step in a way, you know, like at least to start the record, you know, I have a few songs and then after I have... Um, a bit of a concept, you know, of what's this world I'm trying to create. Then I start to also write songs for this world, you know, so... Um, but this form of expression, which is very um, strong in, in Brazil, um, is is definitely like, a, you know, something that grounds my, my work as a musician and as a guitarist too, because kind of like getting into this repertoire, you kind of have to learn a few chords, you know, it's a bit, uh, you, you know, yeah, you love the song and then you have to learn and it's, it's a bit of like a bunch of chords, so it's a big part of my work in music. Well, you're two records in and already I see you getting more adventurous with each new record and you're tempting us with a new song already this year, and what's coming next for you? Right. Um, yeah, you know, still promoting this record. I I had a, a kid right after the record came out, so I was celebrating that uh, creation, <laughs> you know, for, for a while. So, you know, it's still very fresh to, to work this record on the road because I, I was home for for a good period. Um, so we, we're still going to tour around this record, and I'm toying around with ideas for, for a new work, but a, a bit on abstract brush strokes, you know. Like, well, congratulations on both the new baby you. and the new record, and yeah. do take your time to enjoy <laughs> both of those. Yeah. And thank you for taking the time to stop by today. Of course, my pleasure. You're going to listen to Sessa here live in the KEXP studios. We're listener-powered KEXP. Thank you to everyone who supports great performances like this. You can learn more about us at kexp.org and make a contribution anytime. We are so appreciative of our contributing audience. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get notification every time we launch a new video. Once again, Sessa live on KEXP. Discover great music at kexp.org.